Let's talk about how to use out of sight, out of mind to supersize and grow your business. Sharon horn Elstrom here. Can't keep those on the whole time. Drive my eyes crazy. Today's idiom for our perusal is out of sight, out of mind. I actually love this idiom, not just because I'm legally blind, but because it's a great idiom and it's a great way to filter out things, number one, that we don't have any control over, number two, that are none of our business, number three, that we shouldn't be wasting our time and energy on anyway when we're creating something that we want to see in the world. So what does it mean? Where does it come from? It's actually been around It's in English since the 13th century. It is a very, very old idiom, right? It appeared in writing in John Haywood's work in 1562. Uh, he did a, a compilation of, of idioms that were popular at the time. And we've referred to that a lot as, as I've found the origin of idioms because it was the first place that a lot of things, a lot of idioms and a lot of sayings were ever actually documented. Uh, it's, it's refreshing to find an idiom that I can actually find that they've got, an, okay, this is when it originated. Well, what does it mean? Out of sight, out of mind, of course, means to... I'm going to grab my, it means to, uh, it's, it can be applied to relationships, right? It's definitely applied to business. It's been applied to, uh, politics. You know, if, if you don't know what they're doing, then out of sight, out of mind, not a good philosophy in business or in relationships or in, in, uh, politics as far as I'm concerned, but it's for each of us to decide. I actually take things like this that are Maybe it could have a positive and negative, which almost any idiom or expression or word that we use can. And I like to look for what is the way I can use this? How can I look at this in ways that will help me to grow and build and supersize my business and to create the life that I want through business relationships? And I'm never going to be involved in politics. But one of the things and one of the early lessons that I learned was my son decided he was going to climb mountains and go to Nepal. He was in his just barely 20 I think and he was gonna to go to Mount Everest and climb Mount Everest and first he was gonna to go to Japan and visit his cousin and meet their new baby etc and then go to Nepal from there because it, it turns out that when he chose to fly they, just like we have spring break here they have a golden time or golden something and everybody in, in that part of the world travels for like our spring break and so he had a hard time getting on on flights and it's a long story. So he decides he's going to go on this, this trip. And, you know, indefinite amount of time, he's going to go climb mountains. <laughs> Needless to say, I am a, I think I mentioned yesterday that I might be a bit of a helicopter mom and grandma. And I was catching myself worrying about him all the time. Now, he's 7,000 miles away, right? He's on the other side of the world. What am I going to do about it? I bought him trip insurance, which turned out to be a good thing because he had to be airlifted off of Mount Everest down to Kathmandu. And that would have cost us, you know, a fortune. But we had trip insurance. So I highly recommend if you're going to go somewhere crazy or go on adventures, buy trip insurance. Uh, but I knew then and I decided like the first couple of days that he was gone because his dad kept calling me to find out a status update and I'm like, I don't have one. He's not calling me every minute, every day and he's thousands of miles away. There is nothing we can do to control this situation. We have to trust that he's an adult or almost an adult and if he's, you know, wise enough and smart enough to plan this trip and we've raised him right, he will be fine, which he was. But I had to decide early on to turn off my worry for things that I can't control. I had no control over that, so why was I going to worry about that? And then I applied that to other areas and aspects of my life, which has served me really well. Things that are outside of our control, we need to figure out how we're going to handle them with respect to our business, but we can't fret and stew and worry about what could possibly happen if we're not paying attention to our day to day and doing and setting systems and, and processes and training people and doing things to create what it is that we want. Our job is to focus on and create what we want to see in the world, not worry about all of the things we can't control. Because the truth is, we can't see the vast majority of what's going on in the world and things that could possibly impact us. So if we just hone our skills and our abilities to deal with challenges, deal with changes, deal with obstacles, we're serving ourselves and the world much better with our example of how to deal with challenges and, and, and struggles and things that come up than if we are worrying or thinking about things that could possibly happen that usually never do, right? Fear is false expectations. A 
appearing real because 90 plus percent of the time, the thing that we're worried about, the thing that we're fearing never happens unless we help create it to happen because we think about it and give it so much energy. So uh, there's so much that's unseeable. Why would we ever think that we can control everything? Control what you can control, create what you want to see in the world, and then use out of sight, out of mind as a way to remind yourself that there's things that aren't our business, things that we don't need to worry about, and I really have come to believe that worrying is an absolute positive waste of time and energy because all it does is give more power to the thing that you don't want to happen. Love to know your experience with this particular idiom, out of sight, out of mind. I find as my vision gets worse, a lot more things are out of sight, therefore out of my mind. And I get to pay attention to the things that are most important to me and my business. And the other stuff, I just let it go. All right, have an awesome day. Share in the comments below your experience with this idiom. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how could you apply it to your business if you want to get creative and do that? Right, have a great day.